Looks like we are ready to begin. I'm so glad you're here with me. Tonight will be the opening night, the welcome to the online study. And so actually, Adriel, can I make you the keeper of the chat? So if somebody chats, I want you to holler at me. Hey. Awesome. Thank you. Chat. Very good. Okay. Charlene, welcome. Glad you're here. All right. So first, I want, I'm curious. How much do you already know about Daniel? Uh, I'm sure you've heard some things. You've probably maybe already done studies in the past, but I have another poll. Uh, I'm curious what you think is the central theme of Daniel. So I'm sending out a poll, and you should see this come up on your screen. So go ahead and vote and tell me what do you think is the main, the central literary theme of Daniel. All right, about half the votes are in. Almost there, 89%. Lock in that last vote. I feel like it's a game show. What is your final answer? <laughs> One more to vote. All right, we'll give you another second or so. If you haven't voted yet, please do. I'll go ahead and end it. Uh, so it looks like the majority says that the key theme is God's sovereignty. I threw a couple red herrings in here. All of these things are mentioned in the book of Daniel, but only one of them is the main key theme, and it's actually God's sovereignty. So I think you guys already know maybe more than you think you do about the book of Daniel. So we're all going to learn together here. So all of those items, whether they're a key theme or not, we're going to talk about those throughout this 10-week study. So tonight's night one, and we'll just overview the whole class and what you can expect. Um, and I have a fun activity or two for you tonight. And after tonight, I'll send an email with instructions for your reading for next week. And I'll, I'll have a video for you to watch with the background of Daniel. So next week will be the background. So we have some work to do before we even get to read chapter one. Okay. So we've got to do an icebreaker here because I think I know everyone here and maybe you do too, or maybe not. Um, but what I want to do is have us go uh, one by one and I want you to tell us your name. And then in one sentence, if that's possible, in one sentence, tell us about a dream you've had. Okay, I'll go first. So nobody feels too awkward. Um, hi, my name is Sam Corcoran. Uh, a recurring dream I have is, um, well, almost all my dreams have my grandparents. And my recurring dream is I'm three years old and I'm being sucked down um, the spiral of the water going down the bathtub drain. Interesting. I don't know what it means. Maybe you guys can help me figure that out. Okay. So um, I will randomly call you guys since we have over 20 people here with us. So let's see, Adriel, I'm going to pick on you. Can you go next, please? Yeah, of course. My name is Adrielle Dixon, and a dream I have been having lately reoccurring is that I'm on the HOA board and everyone is trying to firebomb my house. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> oh, man. I am on the HOA board, so there's a chance that might happen. <laughs> Stressful. Oh, thanks, Adriel. Okay, oh. let's have Kimberly go next. Wait, Yakely. Kimberly Yakely. We've got two Kimberleys here. Um, it usually has something to do with food. Um, um, a recent one was um, I took my four-year-old grandson to the bakery, but we never could find the bakery. Nightmare. That's really sad. <laughs> <laughs> the endless search. Wow. Thank you, Kimberly. <laughs> Let's see. Angie Crone, do you want to go next? Are you there, Angie? She might have stepped away for a sec. I know this is so hard. Being so bedtime. muted on my screen. Okay, we'll come back to Angie. How about Kathy Middleton? Hi, I'm Kathy Middleton, 
And my recurring dream is from my days at working at Perfect Peace and dealing with books, still ordering books. Oh, I miss that story. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> All right, Barbara, can you go next for us? Um, hi, I'm Barbara Quadlander, and I can't even think of anything I've dreamed lately. Probably because I don't sleep well, so I would love to dream. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. Thanks, Barbara. Julie Pierman. What's a dream you've had? Um, okay, I used to have, it's been a the Julie Pierman. My name's Julie Pierman. Um, I used to have this dream where I was losing my teeth, and they would just, like, I'd pull one out, and then another one would be there, and I'd pull another one out. So I used to have that dream all along, a, lo a lot. I haven't had it in a long time, though. Wow. <laughs> Dream's amazing. They're fascinating. Uh, thank you so much, Julie. I'm glad your teeth are all still in. <laughs> <laughs> you have a beautiful smile. Oh, Brenda Heller, would you please go next? I'm Brenda Heller. My recurring dream is always that I'm a government spy, um, and then it differs in how I'm catching the criminals. And some I don't catch. I just saw one with the flash of a neon sign escaping. Wow. <laughs> that sounds exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Debbie, would you like to go next? Oh, hang on, Debbie. You got to unmute. Here we go. Got it. Debbie Lawson. And when I was a little girl, I used to dream about hiding in the grandfather's clock. I think from a bad guy. I don't exactly remember, but we, it was the grandfather's clock that we had that my dad built. Oh, wow. Cool. Nice. So it has the door at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Sneak right in there. Mm -hmm. Nice hiding spot for kids. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. Elizabeth, would you like to go next? Sure. Um, I actually go by Beth. So oh, I'm Beth, Beth I'm so sorry. And no, it's okay. It's okay. Um, my Zoom's just under Elizabeth, so that's what pops up. Gotcha. Um, and I do tend to have really vivid dreams. One I can think of, I was driving with someone along. It's like we were on a roller coaster track across the Grand Canyon, and then they just decided to drive off of the track into nowhere. Oh, and we fell, and I remember that sense of falling, and we're just falling, and I'm thinking, why did, did they do that? And then all of a sudden, we landed in a tree, and we were okay. Whew, that was close. <laughs> I know, it was very nerve-wracking for me during the dream, too. <laughs> all I bet is to make your stomach drop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing, Beth. Uh, Peggy, do you want to follow Beth? Yeah, think of... Uh... A recurring one, but I'm going to tell you the one I had last night. I dreamed that Pamela Partridge, who is April's mother-in-law, and I were going out for lunch, and while we were there, uh, we saw Kimberly Yakeley and a friend of mine, Beverly Bolton, who really is deceased, and uh, they were waiting for a table, and we were waiting for a table, and it was during covid and uh, they didn't have tables for us and we left and there was this whole big long line and then I went outside and I couldn't find my car. But I finally found it, but it wasn't where I left it. Oh no. <laughs> oh man. That makes you feel very disoriented. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Peggy. Um, Missy, can we have you go next? Um, hi, I'm Missy um, Womack and um, I have a reoccurring dream. I haven't had one in a long time, but um, when I was a young mom, I'd always dreamed that a tornado was coming and I was in a house with just one of those claw um, bathtubs, the claw feet, and um, I, I didn't have a basement. And so I would grab a mattress and I would lay on top of the boys, but always one of the boys was lost. So I had to decide, am I going to go search for Eddie or lay on top of Andy with the mattress on top of me? <laughs> I had it all the time, and it was always a quandary. Oh, no. I hated that dream. I really did. I hated yeah. that. <laughs> between the two. Yeah. yeah I had to choose oh. between going to find the other one or laying 
with the mattress on top of the baby in the in the bathtub. Whew. Yeah. 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 I don't have that anymore. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Thanks, Missy. You're welcome. All right. Kimberly Babish, would you like to go next? Yes, ma'am. Hi, Kim Babish. Um, my recurring dream is I cannot seem to show up anywhere with pants on. <laughs> I am naked. <laughs> oh, man. That's so, so embarrassing. So embarrassing. And you feel like that's a real feeling when you wake up and you're like, oh, did that really happen? Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Kim. Oh, let's see. Um, Allison, have we talked to you yet? No. Okay, I'm Allison go for it. Marshall. Um, mine kind of coincides with my reality that I would love for this to happen, but I'm always in my closet hiding from the kids eating some form of chocolate. <laughs> and my kids are standing at my door, banging on the door to get in, and I just don't let them in, and then I wake up. That's oh. happened several times. Like in real life and in dreams? No, just in dreams. Oh, okay. In real life, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> is it is it like the horror movies, you know, where you see their little toes under the door? Yeah, it is. Oof. That's yeah. tough. <laughs> Hang in there. <laughs> uh, Meredith, can we talk to you yet? Not yet. Go for it. I'm Meredith Hendricks, and <clears throat> I might have... The situation might be different, but if ever I am running in a dream, I actually can't run. Like I cannot get my legs to move. And it's, I've, it's all my life. I've had that dream and I'm sure it means something. I don't know what, but it's the most frustrating thing in the middle of my dream. If I'm being chased or whatever other reason I might be running, I cannot get my legs to move. Wow. Yeah. Oh, it's like you're paralyzed. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Thanks for sharing Meredith. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who have we not talked to yet? Jump on in if we've missed you. Oh, Norma. Good yeah. heavens. Norma, will you please introduce yourself? Um, I'm Norma Banning, and I don't remember a recurring dream especially, but last night I had a dream. Diane and Emery and I were traveling together, and everything behind and around us was just being destroyed. It was just disappearing and blowing up and destroyed and I just I don't know if it's too much thought about COVID and what's the craziness in the world or what but mm -hmm. I didn't like it I was ready to wake up I can imagine yeah all right thanks Norma Barbara did we get to you yes yes okay April did we get to you Go for it. uh my name is April Partridge um I can't really think of any specific dreams that I have all the time, but I do a lot of falling in my dreams for some reason, probably because I do in real life too. Um, and you just yeah. did, right? And, and uh, so I do, you know, it's where you can feel yourself falling and then you hit and then, you know, I wake up. So that's kind of my recurring dream yeah you just feel that in the pit of your stomach Oof. yes or your ankle in, in which case all right anyone else that we've missed thanks april okay we'll come back to our other friends later once they can join um i don't know if you saw in chat but angie crone is it a volleyball game <laughs> that is dedication <laughs> Okay, well, thank you for sharing your dreams. I know that's always kind of awkward uh, to do. And, you know, in our, in our Western culture, when we think about dreams, they're always kind of, oh, that's really interesting. Oh, what does it mean? Like Freud, you know, trying to dissect your dreams. Um, when we get to the book of Daniel, Daniel was written in uh, the Near Eastern culture, not our Western culture. And in their view, um, like the Babylonians, the ancient Mesopotamians, uh, all of those ancient cultures viewed dreams as like a very serious message from the gods, or in Daniel's case, from the one true God. And so thinking about um, the dreams that, that we have, 
that really relates to the book of Daniel, uh, especially when we get to chapter seven and after, and Daniel himself has dreams, the kings have dreams. Um, so we're going to talk a lot, a lot about dreams, but maybe not in the traditional um, like psychoanalyzing way. Uh, we're going to view them more as uh, what we call an apocalypse. And that might be kind of weird um, to call it an apocalypse, but that's our first activity, um, hands-on activity here. So if you've got your keyboard handy and you don't mind doing some searching, uh, I'm going to post a link into our chat and let's see if I can do that. So if you go on your menu uh, at the bottom, you can see the chat and I'm going to type a link in here for you to follow and give me just a second. It's not doing it the way I want. So hold that thought. All right. So I'm gonna post a link here from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, and we're gonna talk about what is our definition of the word apocalypse. So if you'll go into the chat, click that link, and it should open up in your internet browser. Take a look at that, that definition here. Okay, is everybody there? Nod your heads, thumbs up. Give me a signal, excellent, okay. So in Merriam-Webster, um, definition 1A and B are sort of a biblical definition, um, but I would actually argue that it's wrong. <laughs> Just because it says, one of the Jewish and Christian writings of 200 BC to AD 150, marked by pseudonymity, that's like ghostwriting, they, they write under a different name, symbolic imagery, and the expectation of an imminent cosmic cataclysm uh, in which God destroys the ruling powers of evil and raises the righteous to life in the messianic kingdom, in a messianic kingdom. Okay, so what they're talking about is, you know, at the end of the Old Testament, before you get to the New Testament, You've got the, well, some Bibles have a section in between there called the Apocrypha. And again, it's a, another collection of books. They weren't approved for our canon for what we use today. Uh, in the Catholic Bible, they have those sections uh, and in some Jewish Bibles too. But, um, but yeah, so that is talking about the books in between the Testaments and then the book of Revelation. But again, this kind of also illustrates the point I'm about to make is that uh, our culture has a different definition because you notice it says imminent cosmic cataclysm. Uh, and if you, if you go to uh, meaning number three, right, large disastrous fire, inferno, a great disaster. So this is like almost like the Hollywood definition when you think um, Armageddon, well, like the movie Armageddon, right? They're like there's this big disaster happening. And I'm sure you can think of other disaster movies too, um, where it's the end of the world. This is the final battle, right? But here's the thing. That's our English definition of the word, but the Bible wasn't written in English. So what, how did we get to this point? So the word itself is Greek, and so apocalypse, like we know it, is really what they call it, a transliteration. So um, in the Old and New Testaments, apocalypse actually means something completely different. It doesn't mean a cataclysmic um, destruction. It doesn't mean the final battle. It doesn't mean anything like that. So let's find out what it does mean. And I'm going to get you the next link here. I have another one for you to look at. We're going to go to the Blue Letter Bible. Has anybody heard of that one before? The Blue Letter Bible is Strong's Concordance. Um, I put the link in chat 
and it goes right underneath that first link. So it kind of looks like all one link. Uh, but it's the blueletterbible.org. So check that one out. Open it up. And you're going to notice a lot of Greek letters. This is way fun. Um, so there is. Oh. They took me out too. I was like, I'm here. I'm going to mute Angie while she's at her volleyball game. Angie, please unmute yourself if you if you want to jump in and speak. Uh, otherwise, we get a lot of feedback. So in Blue Letter Bible, this is Strong's Concordance. And um, Mr. Strong put together a, a concordance of every word in the Bible in Hebrew for the Old Testament and in Greek for the New Testament. And so if we want to learn what the original language is and what the original meaning was, we go to Strong's Concordance, um, and Blue Letter Bible is just one of many websites that refers to Strong's Concordance. Um, the Strong's Concordance I have is like five inches thick. It's, it's huge. Um, but learning the original meaning behind words can often change how we view a Bible story, and that's what we're, we're going to do now. So if you look on Blue Letter Bible, you'll see there's pronunciation. So... Um, if you want, go ahead and press that. Hear what it sounds like in the original Greek. What do you think? Did you get to hear it? No. Oh. Okay. So, apocalypse. Um, if you scroll down on your page, you know what, I can share my screen too, uh, if that would be a little bit easier. The reason, there's a reason I'm showing you this. Let's see, can I share my screen? It does not want to let me. Mm. Ha. Here's now. Okay, so you should be able to see blue letter Bible on my screen. Can you guys see that? Nod your heads or give me a thumbs up if you can. Yes, awesome, thank you. Okay, so here's the pronunciation that you just did. And when you scroll down on this, uh, it gives you the biblical usage of the word. And so the King James, at least, translates this uh, every word in Strong's is given a code. So this is G602. Um, it means revelation, to be revealed, to lighten, light in contrast to something being hidden in the dark, something revealed in the light, uh, manifestation, appearing. Uh, and so it'll give you some more definitions here uh, concerning things before unknown. So things that were previously hidden are now revealed, laying bare. And so scrolling down more uh, shows you uh, the official definition. This is from um, a Greek lexicon. And then all the way at the bottom, it shows you all of the scriptures that have that exact same word from Strong's Concordance. And so this is really interesting. So these are all of the scriptures that use the word apocalypse. And I'll let you do this on your own, um, in your own study time, but you can go through here. This kind of is addicting because you're like, wait, that's what that means? Like it's used here too? So I have a couple examples that I'll walk you through of the word apocalypse. Um, actually, here's one right here, Galatians 1.12. So if you click on tools and click on interlinear, what this does is uh, it, it gives you this interlinear view here and breaks it down word by word. And it shows you um, the, the transliterated version of, of Hebrew and then the Greek. There's a reason we're doing this. Um, if we scroll down, all the way down, it goes word by word. Okay, so it, what is the original 
Um, Galatians 1. Well, good grief, which one was it? I'm looking for the word revealed. Aha, 112. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So this is Paul talking, and he's talking about his conversion. So he's on the road to Damascus, right? The bright light comes. Maybe uh, he fell down. Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And when it was all over, Paul could not see. Um, so in this case, let's look at the word he used for revelation. So neither was I taught it, but by the revelation right here, it's the word apocalypse. So in this case, it's not the English definition of apocalypse. This wasn't like Paul's final cataclysmic battle. Because the earth is still here. So it's a revelation. It's been revealed. Jesus Christ was revealed to him. So it's not something that Paul did. It's something that was done to him. Okay, let's look at another example. Um, Matthew 11 is a good example. Real fast. We won't take too much more time. I want to give you guys time to talk to each other in small groups. So we'll look up one or two more here. So I'm going to go back up to the top and I'm going to click over here on the right in multiverse retrieval. You can put in lots of different verses, not just one. I'm going to look it up in NIV just because I like NIV and I'll retrieve it. And when it pops up, uh, I like to do the Bible verse view because that's where you get the little tools right here. Uh, okay, so Jesus, this is Jesus speaking. He says, I praise you, Father, in his prayer, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. That's interesting. So in this case, if we come down here and go word by word, there's what it looks like in Greek. Um, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have hidden, notice the Greek word is crypto, like our word cryptic, right? Like he scrambled it, he hid it. Um, these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed, there's, there's the apocalypse word again. So even Jesus has used this word, uh, apocalypse. So what does this all have to do with Daniel? When we get to the book of Daniel, the exile is one of those apocalyptic moments. Now, yes, there was great destruction, but it wasn't the end times or Armageddon or the end of the world. Um, but God's people had an apocalyptic moment happen to them. They realized they had fallen far from God and weren't following him anymore. And so they were taken into exile to a foreign land. And so we're going to think of, we're going to keep revisiting this whole thing about apocalypse uh, because we're going to see it through the entire book of Daniel. And so I hope that learning the definition of that word helps you to kind of see it in a different light. Um, this next week, I'll have you watch my background video before we meet next Tuesday. And I'll talk a little bit more about it. Um, but again, the book of Daniel is filled with dreams and visions, and um, so it, it was meant to both comfort the people, but as well as, um, you know, point them away from earthly security, especially because they were in exile, and point them back toward um, God's kingdom. And us today, we are in an exile too, if you think about it. We're not in our eternal home yet. And we're living under kingdoms of the world, right? So we're in exile. So as we read through Daniel, you'll see a lot of parallels and be able to apply what we learn in Daniel to our lives today. If you think of questions, send me an email. We can have like a Q&A. Uh, if you send me questions, I can answer them in the videos or in person like this. Cool, all right, so we're gonna do breakout rooms. I have a question for you to answer. 
Um, before you get to your breakout room though, make sure that one of you is a timekeeper and another one of you is a scribe. So I'm gonna give you a question here and I want you to talk about it and then the scribe will write down everybody's answers and come back and report out. So the question is, uh, what is something surprising that you learned from the two videos that I sent out, um, the way of the exile or the Daniel overview? So what's something surprising, something new that you learned? Uh, and then what, what do you want to get out of this class? Just one thing is, is sufficient. So tell us what surprised you in those videos and or what you want to get out of the class. And so timekeepers, set your timer for, let's do, so we'll have small groups. So let's do, um, eight minutes. Set your timer for eight minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna put you guys in breakout rooms. I will hang out here. Your breakout room is for you guys. Um, let's get this going. Okay, here we go. You guys come back as soon as your eight minute timer runs out. On your mark, get set, go. Hey guys, it looks like everybody is back. So before we end, I want to share my screen and show one thing in case um, you might not be familiar with videos on YouTube. Um, so every week I'll have a 10 to 15 minute video for you to watch. And uh, it's all going to be on my YouTube channel just as a place to keep every, all these videos in one spot. So I'll have a specific playlist for our class. Um, and so, I'll send links out in the email too, so you don't have to remember um, remember all of this. But I want to show you in the video. If you scroll down, there's a video description, and if you click on Show More, I put all kinds of links and more information and other videos. So uh, it's sort of like um, like supplemental material or um, enrichment. Uh, so if you want to learn more go for it. If you don't have to, it's just there. If you just want to do more deep dives or you're curious about something. So heads up that I always put links in the video description. When I post it on Facebook, uh, you have to then open it in YouTube to see this. So there's a couple steps to it, but um, if you want to learn more, the opportunity is there. Okay, we have three minutes left. I want to hear one item from every scribe what is something that surprised you from the videos or was one thing people in your group want to get out of the class? So, um, Adriel, Meredith, you guys were done first. Do you want to share one from yours? Who was your scribe? Uh, I was the scribe. Awesome. Uh, and, uh, we all kind of agreed that we're just here to learn. Um, we're all excited to see what you have to say about Daniel and excited about your class. And I added that I'm enjoying an hour away from the kids, so. Yes, bedtime with dad. <laughs> Thank you so much team and April for reporting out. Let's hear from another scribe. Let's see, I don't remember what breakout rooms people were in. Oh, Norma, did you want to go? Yes. Um, I wrote as fast as I could. Most of our answers had to do with the videos and or reading the book of Daniel and uh, learned that uh, we are still in exile. The exile has not ended. Mm -hmm. It is a continuous spiritual battle and um, God has a plan for the way we live in exile and um, has laid that out mm -hmm. and did for them as well. And um, let me see. Um, 
one person said that they were anxious to study uh, the book as an adult more than just uh, Daniel and the Lion's Den, those stories that we learned growing up. And uh, it's comforting to know that God is in control of this spiritual battle and we have his strength to rely on. Excellent. All right. Thanks, team. Thank you, Norma, for being the scribe and sharing that. All right, we've got two more scribes to go, I think. Who wants to jump go in? For our it? group, if that's okay. Yeah, go ahead. Um, the one thing that kind of stood out to our group was just how the, the showing of serving Babylon, but your loyalty is staying to God. Like you, it's just so relevant for today even. Um, and then, of course, we agree with uh, the first group that we're just excited to hear what you have to say about Daniel and what we can learn from the study. Great. Thanks. Man, no pressure, guys. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> this is going to be a lot of fun. Okay, one more scribe, I think. Um, that was me. Okay. And we, um, we, one of us was just so surprised about um, that Daniel was written in more than one language, that that was a very interesting thing. It was also for me. Um, and um, it, it, one of us has done a really in-depth study of Daniel. So um, it wasn't a surprise to her, but it was to me too. Um, and then also we reflected on the fact that we wanted to learn more about the book of Daniel um Angela did and and so do I same thing mm -hmm. um and also the for me it was um the same thing about how how do we become obedient to what our government wants us to do in in exile living in exile and still be um obedient to Christ um or God as mm -hmm. as um, in their times, but I, I think it's just so relevant today. Mm -hmm. I do too. And I think you'll see that as we go through each week. Thank you, Missy. So every week we'll have some practical applications so you can use this in your life. Cause that's how the book of Daniel was intended for every generation after Daniel to recognize they're in exile. And what do you do? So I'm so excited you all came tonight and watch for an email from me tomorrow with next week's reading and video and some other links if you want to learn more in the meantime. So glad you guys were here. We're all done for tonight. So I will see you next Tuesday. All okay, right. Bye. Bye guys. Bye. Thanks, Sam. Bye. Bye. Bye.